There are so many different methods and styles of watercolor painting, but for a more realistic look, which is how I like to paint my watercolor animals, it is necessary to understand the importance of blending. To achieve realistic paintings, you need to have a variety of both hard and soft edges. Edges convey depth in a painting, dictate the focal point, and are important for so many reasons. For more about edges, check out this video. And before we go on, if you're looking for weekly watercolor instruction, real-time tutorials, and tips and tricks for improving your watercolor paintings, hit that subscribe button right now. In case you're wondering what do I mean by hard and soft edges, here is a clear visual for you. On the left is a shape with soft edges. You can see there's a very gradual transition from dark to light, and it looks like it's blurred out or it recedes into space. In contrast, the square next to it is composed almost entirely of hard edges. You can see that it appears to come forward in space and seems to demand attention because of its clearly drawn sides, as well as the strong contrast between light and dark with no gradations. Watercolor by its very nature will flow wherever an area of paper is wet. So to achieve the softest, most blended look, work on wet or damp paper. To achieve hard edges for details and focal points, use wet and dry. Mastering techniques for blending your paint colors will allow you to create those smooth and gradual transitions between lights and darks, as well as between different colors. Now, for this demonstration, I painted two versions of the same white horse image, the first one to show poorly blended edges, and the second one to show blended transitions. Let's talk first about the don'ts of blending. Don't paint wet on dry. You can see here I painted the background of this horse painting wet on dry. Now when you're trying to cover a large area with a solid color, I find that painting directly onto the dry paper will generally result in uneven drying of the paint, which creates a patchy look. Wherever your paint overlaps, it will dry slightly darker, and unless you have a perfect uniform mix of color, it will look blotchy. Along the edge of the horse's mane, I wanted to show the white mane flowing in front of the dark background, so I painted carefully around all of the individual bits of hair, but because it was all wet and dry, it looks very cut out, jagged almost, all hard edges. Don't lay down a wet brush stroke on dry paper without resolving it first. Now here you can see I'm applying wet brush strokes to begin painting mid-tone values on the horse's face. Because the paper is dry, all of my paint dries exactly where I put it with hard edges. Those edges would look much smoother if I would just take the time to resolve them by swiping my brush along each edge to soften. Don't overload the brush with too much water. Too much water is the enemy of watercolor. Here I've applied a tinted wash and my brush has a lot of extra water in it which seeps into the area I'm painting, leaving a little puddle. This isn't the most dramatic example I have of having too much water in your brush, but do keep in mind that leaving puddles on your paper like this will cause the paint to dry with a dark ring around it creating a hard, clearly defined edge. Remove any excess water on a paper towel or a rag before applying paint to the paper so that you can better control your brush strokes and edges. So if watercolor is prone to forming hard edges like this, how do we blend using watercolors? Do paint wet and wet. Let's take a moment to really talk about wet and wet technique because I know it's challenging for many people, especially beginners. It's really quite simple though. Wet and wet just involves painting onto damp or wet paper. It's the most valuable technique watercolor artists rely on for creating soft edges. It is possible to still get hard edges while painting wet and wet, and that's because wherever the paper is damp, paint will flow. So if you moisten an area of paper and then paint all inside of that wet area, you will still get hard edges because you let the paint flow right up to where the water stops. To prevent this, you must extend the water a little beyond where you plan on applying the paint and then control where the paint goes by being careful not to paint all the way up to the water's edge. This gives the paint a little bit of extra leeway to stretch its legs as far as it physically can before beginning to dry. I put this into practice with my second version of the white horse. Here I pre-wet the paper with clean water before dropping in some base washes of color. The color spreads and softens on the damp paper, creating effortless soft edges. Then for the background, I painted clean water all over the background and extended it a little bit into the horse's mane. I really wanted to avoid those jagged edges that I got in the first painting. When I painted in my dark background, the wet paper allowed my paint to disperse more evenly and a little bit of it crossed into the forelock. I then took a clean, thirsty brush and scooped any extra bleeding paint out and away in the direction of the flowing mane. You can see the result is so much softer, wispier, and just more natural looking. Do paint wet next to wet. 
This technique is sometimes called charging paints into each other. For subtle color transitions that blend smoothly, I like to apply the two colors side by side while wet. As an example of this, here on the horse's neck, I laid down some wet bluish brush strokes, then rinse and dry my brush really quickly and grab some warmer or more yellowish paint, applying it right next to the blue before the blue has dried. The two colors remain pure and vibrant, but they are seamlessly blended where they touch. Do soften value transitions. To create smooth transitions from light to dark, it's kind of a multi-step process. Start with your darkest area, painting wet on dry or wet and wet. Quickly dip your brush in water to remove a little of the paint, pat it on your paper towel or rag, and then use the lighter paint that's now on your brush to paint alongside your shape, and you can even use it to extend your dark shape with this mid-tone. Do this as often as you need to, to scrub and soften along your edges. All three of these tricks, wet and wet, wet next to wet, and softening are my go-to techniques for creating soft realism. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, and check out these other videos with more tips and tricks for painting with watercolors.